Hello students, my name is Fizwell Lashwayo from Umgungun Lovu Tivet College. Today we are going to be doing NCV Level 2, Mathematics. Our topic is Topic 2 on Functions and Algebra. Our subject outcome is the manipulation and simplifying of algebraic expressions. In this lesson, we are going to focus mainly on factorization. In our previous lesson, we looked at the multiplication of monomials and binomials and things like that. In this lesson, we'll be doing the reverse of what we did in that particular lesson. And the broader term for what we are going to do today is factorization. In other words, we are going to be breaking down expressions into its factors. So we're going to do three specific uh, things today. We are going to factorize an expression by taking out a common factor. Then we are going to factorize by grouping. And then we are also going to look at the factorization of the difference of two squares. What is our pre-knowledge? What do we bring from grade eight and grade nine? We have learned at grade eight and grade nine about a factor. And that a factor is a number which divides exactly into another number without leaving a remainder. For an example, two is a factor of six because six divided by two gives us three and there is no remainder. Therefore, two is a factor of six. In a similar vein, three is also a factor of six because six divided by three, it gives us two. When we write an algebraic expression, factors are separated by the multiplication sign or they are separated by brackets. You will remember that in the previous lesson, we said terms are separated by the plus sign and or the minus sign. With factors, they are separated by the multiplication sign or the brackets. If you look at this example that I've just uh, written down here, we have got A brackets B plus C. This expression has got two factors, A, which is outside the bracket, and B plus C is also another factor. If you look at another example, 5XY, this means 5 times X times Y. It makes this expression or this term or this monomial to have three factors, which are 5, X, and Y. Now let us look at factorizing by taking out a common factor. A common factor is that factor which will occur in all the terms in the expression. We will soon show that. In this example, or in this expression, we've got 2x plus 5xy. You can see that an x exists on the first term, 2x. An x is also there in the second term, 5xy. Therefore, x is a common factor because it is found in both the terms in this expression. Terms may have more than one common factor. Like in this example, we have got 2b minus 4ab. You can see that there is obviously a b in the first term and a b in the second term. So the variable b is a common factor. But numerically, in terms of the numbers, 2 and 4, they also have a common factor, which is 2. Because 2 divided by 2 is 1 without a remainder. 4 divided by 2 is 2 without a remainder. Therefore, 2 is a numerical factor in this expression. Therefore, the common factor for these two expressions is 2b. To take out a common factor, we need to write down the common factor first, outside a set of brackets. Then the expression within the brackets can be worked out by dividing each term by the common factor. I will show that using the two examples that I have now on the screen. A x plus b x. So what I need to do is to identify 
a factor that is common in the first term and in the second term. And I can see that it is x. Then I have a bracket in which I'm going to write the second factor. Now, how do I create the second factor? I will then take the first expression or the first term, ax divided by the common factor, and this gives us a, because this x and that x will cancel out. The same thing for the second term, bx over x, that x and that x will cancel out, and I have b. So a and b are the terms that are going to constitute the second factor. Then I bring them in and say a plus b. Then I have resolved this expression into its factors. The good thing about this is you can always double check your answer by multiplying the x as we did in the first lesson as a monomial, multiplying it in turn with all the terms inside. And you will see that a times x gives us ax, and x times b gives us bx. So you can check whether your answer that you got for factorization is correct. The second example is 4a squared xy plus 8ax squared y plus 12axy squared. It becomes a little bit challenging by inspection quickly to find the common terms. So what I will do is to express each term as a product of its factors. So on the, at the bottom here, I'll have 4a squared xy. This breaks down to 2 times 2, which is the 4, and then times the a times the a times x times y. For 8, a x squared y, I will break it down again to 2 times 2 times 2 times a times x times x times y. The same thing for 12, a x y squared. I will break it down into 2 times 2 times 3, that gives us the 12, and then times a times x times y times y. Then we now need to look at the common factors, which we can call the highest common factor. So you can see that what is common? We've got a 2, which is common for all of them. We have got an a is common for all of them. We have got an x is common for all of them. We have got the y common for all of them. Now, the lowest power of 2 that we can get from each of the expressions is 2 to the power of 2. In other words, we can get a maximum of two twos from each of these. So that becomes 2 to the power 2. For the a's, we can only get 1a from each expression. So the power will be 1. And for the x, again, we can get 1x, 1x, and 1x there, which makes it that. And for the y, again, we can only get 1y. So our HCF becomes 4axy. That becomes our common factor. Now, this is what we are going to write outside the bracket. 4axy. Now, what am I going to write inside the bracket? What factor is going to constitute the bracket? Therefore, I have to divide each of these terms by the common factor, which I will do on the side of the board here. 4a squared xy divided by 
4 a x y you can see that the 4 and the 4 will cancel out the x and the x will cancel out the y and the y will cancel out a will leave us with 1 a there so I will have an a if I do that then 8 a x squared y 8 a x squared y divided by 4 a x y again 8 divided by 4, it gives us 2. A and A will cancel out, and then we've got 1x, and then the y cancels out. The next thing will be 12AXY squared. 12AXY squared divided by 4AXY. Again, 12 divided by 4 gives us 3. The AX, AX cancels out, and here we've got a y. So these terms are the ones that are going to constitute the bracket. And we were adding throughout, so it becomes a plus 2x plus 3y. Now we have resolved this expression into its factors. We have got a factor outside the bracket, which is the monomial, and the factor inside the bracket, which is the trinomial. And we have resolved our expression into its factors. I will now show you the, uh, the solutions that I have already represented on the board, and now you can see them on your screen. Next, I'll give you three minutes to deal with these four questions, in which you're going to factorize by taking out the HCF. So the first one is 2xy plus 4xz. 
So we can clearly see that an X exists there. And a 2 also is common numerically. So our common factor will be 2X. Then if we divide 2X by 2 by 2X, 2XY divided by 2X will have Y. And then 4XZ divided by 2X will have 2Z. And then that is our expression. In the second exp uh, expression, we have got 4X squared Y minus 8XY squared plus 12XY. Numerically, you can see that a 4 is a common factor because 4 can be divided by 4, 8 can be divided by 4, 12 can be divided by 4. So numerically, we've got a 4. You can see that there is an x, x, x there. So we can take an x as a common factor, y, y, y. We can take again a y as a common factor. This gives us, in this case, we have x, 4x squared y divided by 4xy, 4 and 4 cancels out, y and y cancels out, then x cancels out 1x, we remain with 1x. Minus 8 divided by 4, it is 2, x and x will cancel out, y2, y1, it means we'll have 1y. Plus 12 divided by 4, it is 3, xy, xy, they both cancel out, and we have that expression. The third example, it is 1 over 3 pi r squared h minus 1 over 3 pi r squared h. Now, I have to remind you that in mathematics and in science, the symbols have got a specific meaning. You will see that there is an r, there is an r, but this one is a capital R, this one is a small r, capital H, small h. They may represent the same quantity, but they don't represent exactly the same quantity. In other words, if r stands for radius, it would, spend, it would mean that it is a bigger radius as compared to the smaller radius, a bigger height and a smaller height. So when we look at common factors now, it means one over three is a common factor. Pi is a common factor. So we can factor out 1 over 3 pi. And then inside the bracket, we we'll remain with r squared h minus r squared h. And that becomes the end of our expression. The last example has been written in a slightly different way, just to spice up uh, 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 yeah, the question. So we will have pi d squared over 4 minus pi d squared over 4. I can rewrite this one in exactly the same way as we have done here so that it creates a bit of clarity. So this is the same thing as 1 over 4 pi d squared minus 1 over 4 pi d squared. If I write it like this, it makes it easy. We can see that 1 over 4 pi, 1 over 4 pi is a common factor. Therefore, we factor it out. 1 over 4 pi, and in brackets, we have d squared minus small d squared. And that becomes the factors of that expression. In the second part, we are going to look at factorizing by grouping. This is often done when there are more than three terms in an expression. Sometimes the terms need to be arranged in order to take out a common factor. We will see that as we go on with our examples. Then you have to write the terms that you plan to group in brackets with a plus sign in between the brackets. In this example, we are going to look at factorizing that expression. So in this example, we are going to factorize by grouping. As I've mentioned earlier on, grouping is normally used when an expression has got more than three terms. And you can see we've got ax plus bx plus ay plus by. I will show you two ways of doing it. 
and then we'll move on from there. So the first thing that we need to do is to look at these four terms. Now, if you look at the first terms, you can see that an x is common there. The second two terms, a y, is common there. So we can actually say these two, we factorize them separately, and then these two, we factorize them separately. In other words, we group these two together, and we group these two together. That is where the concept of factorizing by grouping comes from. We then use the same process that we have done earlier on. X is the common factor, so we factor out the X, and inside the bracket, we will have A plus B, and then plus. In the second example, Y is the common factor, so we've got Y outside the bracket, and we've got A plus B. Now, this is a very important stage, because our aim is to create two brackets that have got the same information. We've got A, B, A, B. We've got a plus between A and B. We've got a plus sign between A and B. So we would like very much to create similar or identical brackets. Then the last stage would then be to collect the terms that are outside the brackets, which is the X and the plus Y. Then they form their own bracket. And then we collect A plus B as the second bracket. And then we have actually factorized our expression. We have now created the two brackets. You can double check by expanding this expression to see if it can go back to that. And you will see it will definitely do that. Another way of doing it would be to rearrange the, the terms. If, if somehow you see that there are no common terms within the first two, you may have to rearrange them by looking at those that share a common term. It was not necessary for this question, but I will do it for the purposes of learning. So what I have done in the second example, I have rearranged the expressions. Now I have got AX plus AY, so that A becomes the common term. I now have BX plus BY, and B becomes the common term. I will do the same uh, working, which means I'll factor out A in brackets, I'll have X plus Y, and then plus B in brackets, I'll have again X plus Y. Then I collect the terms outside the bracket to form their own bracket, A plus B, and then X plus Y. This answer is exactly the same as that answer. The only difference is that our first bracket is X plus Y. Here our first bracket is A plus B. Our second bracket is A plus B. Our second bracket here is X plus Y. But it is the same thing. So on our slide now, I'm now showing you the method one, which I've shown on the board, and method two, after rearranging the expressions. We are now going to look at example two. So in this next example, again, we look at the first two terms. And you can see that a three and an A are common. And for the second two terms, the two is also common. So we can straight on factorize these, this expression. So in method one, we have done it straight by looking at what we have on the um, uh, expression. And then that becomes our answer. And then in the second method, I've done the rearrangement. And again, you can see that the 3ax has been paired with 2x and minus 9a with minus 6. And by factorization, we come out with a similar expression. Now I'm going to give you two minutes to deal with these two expressions.
For our solutions, I've just used one method, and for the first example, that becomes the factors, and for the second example, that becomes the factors. We are then going to move on to factorizing the difference of two squares. In grade nine, we learned that a minus b times a plus b is equal to a squared minus b squared. Hence, if we factorize a squared minus b squared, it goes back to a minus b in brackets, a plus b. The a squared minus b squared is called the difference of two squares, and its factors are a minus b in brackets, a plus b. a squared plus b squared, which is the sum of two factors, it has got no factors. Sometimes the examiner gives you that and asks you to factorize it. It means a squared plus b squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Or you can just write it has got no factors. What are the steps in factorizing the difference of two squares? First, you write down a pair of brackets, as indicated here, and then put a plus sign in one bracket and a minus sign in the other bracket. It doesn't matter which bracket. You can put the plus sign in the first bracket and the minus sign in the second bracket, like I've shown here, or you can put the minus sign in the first bracket and the plus sign in the second bracket. It is not cast in stone. And then the next thing is to find the square roots of the terms. In this case, the square root of x squared is x and the square root of y squared is y. And then the last thing is to write them in the brackets in this way. And then we have factorized the difference of two squares. Now let's look at two examples, x squared minus 81. Now I have written 81 in like 9 to the power 2. You can clearly see that we have got x squared and 9 squared, two squares. The square root of x squared is x, the square root of 9 squared is 9 our expression will end up like that. For the second example, I have written 25 as 5 squared. And then I factor out the exponent. It becomes 5x all to the power of 2. The square root of 1 squared, it is 1. The square root of 5x squared is 5x. Our expression ends like that. What have we learned in this lesson? We have learned to factorize by taking out a common factor. We've also learned to factorize by grouping. And we also learned to factorize the difference of two squares. You will need to do more practice on these questions. Hence, I've left you with four practice questions. Until we meet again, have a wonderful day.